Nick, Nick, come on. What is it? What happened? I feel like we did this already. We, we did, we did. This like this. Like, same exact thing. Same exact thing, same yeah. exact thing. Yeah. But do you know how many views that video got, baby? Yeah. Millions. Yeah. Millions. All right. If it ain't broke, we ain't fixing it. I agree. All right, you're right, yeah. Did, uh, did you bring the hat? I did, yeah, it's right there. You brought the, the chicken yeah, yeah, hat? Yeah, I got oh it. Oh, my God. I can't wait. <laughs> All right, All right uh, just back it up. We'll do it over again. All right, do it again. Because the first responder footwear, the brand I trust is Hikes. And my go to's are the Black Eagle Athletic Low. These bad boys got a comfortable fit like a tennis shoe, great for warm weather, wet weather, or weather weather. They're anti slip, they dry real fast, and they're super breathable. Subject running. And now I get to show you my favorite feature <laughs> activate rocket boots. Rocket boots. So there's two ways you get your hands on a pair of these. You can visit www.hikes.com or subscribe to their YouTube channel on Hikes, then comment done on this video. And you'll be eligible for a giveaway. Oh yeah, time to get some back. And remember, heroes wear hikes. And we're back. Welcome to another episode of Police Car. Today we're in Miami, Florida, standing outside of one of our favorite places here on Police Cars, Florida Highway Patrol Troop E. We're gonna to be touring one of their awesome vehicles, one of their high performance vehicles that allows them to catch up to speeders and is really impressive to see out on the highways. So with that being said, let's go meet with Lieutenant Camacho and get this thing started. Hi, good, thank you. This way, been here so many times. It's like I'm an honorary highway patrolman. Come on in. All right, so Lieutenant Camacho's office is back here. Hey. Lieutenant Camacho. Hey. What's going on, man? What's up, man? How are you, brother? How's everything going? How you been, man? Good to see you. Look, we got an official cameraman now. I like that. You like that? I like it. So, police cars, you ready to go? I am. Let's go. Let's go. Before we get started, I know you, but why don't you formally introduce yourself to the audience? Absolutely. Lieutenant Alex Camacho, Florida Highway Patrol, Office of Public Affairs for Miami-Dade and Monroe County. Public Affairs, what, what does that entail? Oh man, uh, media relations, uh, community outreach, event planning, recruitment, uh, things like this that we're doing right now. Police cars. Yes. All right, so we, where are we going? Where are we headed right outside? Now. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So right now we're at our headquarters for Troop E. We're at the back area now where our members uh, park their vehicles. A couple of different areas back here for our members. We have our uh, vehicle installation area. Anytime we get some equipment that needs to be installed, whether it's a new camera system or any type of equipment really, it's right back there where you see all those vehicles parked. That's also where we keep our spare vehicles in case a trooper needs to swap out vehicles. All of our spare vehicles are kept there, properly maintained. Uh, and back there, that's where we kept the retro fleet. Remember that? That's where we keep some of our goodies. Are they still back there? They are. Oh. Yes. Got to take, got to preserve those. <laughs> <laughs> so where's the vehicle that we're touring today? It's right back there. But what, what happened to your camera guy? Just like in the intro, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, baby. <laughs> I feel like this way it keeps it a little more personal too. Yeah. I agree. So we incorporate the cameraman. We keep it old school. Ah, we'll see what works. <laughs> head to toe let us know start at the very top or at the front 2019 dodge challenger rt 5.7 hemi v8 engine with obviously the police package bigger alternator better cooling system for when the car is running for uh, longer periods of time 
better cooling system for the transmission as well. As you can see from factory, the hood scoop, which is for the air induction, again, a little bit more better performance. And LT, I noticed like back there, there's a Tahoe with a push bumper. That Charger has a push bumper, but this Shalanja doesn't have a push bumper. Can you explain that a, a little bit? Good observation. So most of the vehicles in our fleet have the push bumper. Like we've talked about in the previous videos, uh, we use it for uh, if we need to move a disabled vehicle out of the roadway because it's obstructing traffic, somebody needs to get uh, to a safer area if their car is broken down in the middle of the highway, we use the push bumpers for that without damaging their vehicle or ours. And also, our push bumpers are a little unique in the sense that they actually wrap around the entire front end of the car in case we do need to utilize it for a pit maneuver uh, from a fleeing vehicle. If we're ever pursuing a vehicle and we need to utilize it for that, it also helps in uh, reducing the damage to our vehicle where it's just mainly uh, cosmetic damage. So no pits for this guy right here, or girl, we don't know. It would, be a, it would be a last, ultimately last option. We'd let a car with a push bumper take the lead on that. All right, so like a, so like a little pit. Maybe like a little 1% chance. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's move on. So no push bumper, the sweet uh, circular lights there. Yeah, some uh, lighting in the front here. Two, uh, two lights here on the grill of the car, fog lights down below. The front spoiler for the vehicle helps with the aerodynamics of the car, helps with the handling of the car. Uh, obviously, this car does not have a light bar on the top. It's a slick top, so in the front, we have the visor lights. We'll, oh, yeah. We'll get more into that a little bit once we do the light show, I think. Oh, that's right, baby, the light show, the bread and butter of police cars. <laughs> so moving along, the state trooper insignia across the front fender, big, bold, gold letters, lets everybody know who we are. The oversized wheel package, 20 inch wheels, low profile tires, very wide tire for maximum uh, traction, maximum handling capabilities for when we're out there uh, trying to overtake vehicles. The Florida Highway Patrol insignia on the door with the state of Florida flag. This pretty cool little fuel gas cap here, kind of race cars. I think it gives the car a nice touch. Star FHP, again, for those of you that didn't know, Star FHP or Star 347, whenever you see something out on the roadways that you think uh, you should report to law enforcement and you want to reach us directly. That Star FHP, Star 347, connects you to a local regional communication center for Florida Highway Patrol, wherever you're at uh, on the roadway. All right, so we're moving, moving to the trunk. Now, she's got a beautiful rear end. No, no <laughs> offense, no offense. <laughs> it's got some lighting up here inside of the rear window. State trooper insignia here, state flag, of course, and the reflective tape for at night when people, when vehicles are approaching us, these, these guys actually reflect, which helps visibility for the troopers for whatever scene they might be at. Uh, lights were installed in the rear bumper along the uh, tag as well. And uh, it's got the pretty cool uh, stainless steel muffler exhaust tips, which give it a nice little uh, touch. A little dually exhaust. Dual exhaust, yeah. And then, uh, and then I, we're identical on the other side. Identical. Identical <laughs> on the other side. Man, she's a beauty. Yeah, I must agree. All right, so. Coming up, let's take a look at the engine, the inside, and of course, we gotta do the light show. Absolutely. So are we ready to take this bad boy out for a spin or what? Of course, man, let's roll. Since we've been riding together, I noticed you have Chargers, the Ford Explorers, Tahoes, and now we're in a Challenger. Is there any specific unit that uses this vehicle or is this just a normal patrol vehicle? This is a, a normal patrol vehicle. Uh, but with that being said, we don't have a lot of the Challengers. The bulk of our fleet is obviously the, the Charger, uh, the Tahoe, the Explorers. Um, for obvious reasons, this car is it's a little bit smaller. It's definitely a better performing car all around, but it's smaller. It's not as practical for an arrestee transport or a prisoner transport. If the officer, the trooper that's assigned to this car, if he has to arrest somebody, he now has to call for a transport uh, unit to come right. and take that arrestee. So this is not like a one-off. In a previous episode, I covered a Challenger. It was a Hellcat. It was confiscated from a narcotics dealer, and then they repurposed it to use as like an outreach tool. Do you guys use this kind of like a, uh, an outreach tool? Do you guys get stopped for oh, pictures and stuff? Absolutely. Yeah? This car, yeah. uh, it, it's, it's an attention grabber, and it's great for just that uh, outreach, whether we're talking to uh, students at a school that are you know, future drivers, 
uh, and we want to get them to be a little bit maybe more receptive to the information that we want to uh, get to them. We use the car as everybody wants to take pictures of the car. Everybody, obviously, it's a, it's a nice, good-looking muscle car. It really attracts a lot of attention in a very positive way for the department. So it's used for recruitment. It's used for outreach. But the main purpose of the vehicle is obviously proactive uh, enforcement out there on, on these roadways. Um, yeah, it's a presence when you drive by. I've yeah. seen it quite a few times when it's sitting there in the median and you're like, oh boy. Yeah, yeah. so most of the black and tan, the paint scheme, you know, they have that effect, right? The Chargers look great too, but the, the Challenger, it's just, it, it demands that much more attention. And that's what we want. We want our presence to be visible out there to deter uh, that type of bad driving behavior, people driving kind of recklessly or maybe driving a little bit too fast. That's the point of the of the marked units out there, and, and I think the Challenger accomplishes that. like this, but I went out of the truth I would just turn it down. Oh yeah. How you doing, sir? I'm going to need you to step <laughs> outside the vehicle and we get some B-roll. Yes, sir. You like the hat? LT, you want to? Uh... Yeah, I mean, is it is it cool to get back in the vehicle now? Yeah, you can get back inside your own vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> so same equipment as every other car we have, just obviously different layout. So the things that you're used to seeing them in a certain spot, they're not at that spot because this car has a center console and it's just a different type of car all around. So we'll start with what we're gonna get a little bit more into later, the light box. Typically the light box right up here would be down here in this area. But because this car has the console running down the center, again, we didn't really want to cut into it or anything like that. So we placed it up here in this storage area here. Still easy to reach, still easy to reach all of your buttons, all of your controls up here. The radio is actually mounted onto the center console on the side of it right here. The radio is here and the uh, holder for the microphone is over here. And then the uh, PA sister microphone is right next to it, right over here all along the side of the center console here. Same stand uh, for the computer, a little bit different, but same uh, stand, this one's made for uh, this car. The printer's over here. Typically the printer's in the, in the center of the vehicle, but again, because of the, the space, it's mounted over here. This particular vehicle has a radar system installed. It's got the uh, display right up here, and the front antenna is right here. And then of course, like every other vehicle, the 360 degree uh, Panasonic camera system, which gives us a front, rear, and side to side view of the vehicle. So you guys don't actually wear physical body cameras attached to your body. This is kind of like your body camera. Yeah, instead of the actual body cameras that go on your person or in your uniform, we went with the 360 degree camera system, which uh, also tells a pretty good story of uh, whatever incident you might have to respond to. Again, this gives you a front view, rear view, and uh, each side. The cameras that are mounted on the side are very wide angle uh, cameras, so it really gets the entire side of the car from front to back. On to the junk in the trunk. Let's go. This vehicle, uh, the trooper that uh, this, this vehicle was assigned to, he actually swapped into another vehicle to let us uh, display this car. So what's in here right now is a first aid kit, raincoat, you would typically see a lot more equipment in here if the car was being utilized for patrol purposes. What we'll get into now is basically the, the brains of the car. Uh, as you can see, all of the extra equipment that's installed in these cars. This is actually the radio, uh, radio system for our regional communication centers. These three are for the uh, federal light box system, which is all of the emergency lighting in the car. This box here controls the uh, Panasonic 360 degree camera system. And then of course, all the wiring and fuses and harnesses that come along with that. There's a lot of wiring and extra equipment that goes into getting these cars rigged and, and set up properly. And for the first time ever, and there could be a really good reason why it's the first time ever, 
we're gonna check out the goods under the hood. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> 5.7. V8 Hemi, close to 400 horsepower, right out of the factory. Pretty standard equipment, rather. The only optional stuff is what makes it the police package, which is the bigger alternator, bigger battery, bigger radiator for the cooling, and bigger transmission cooler for the transmission because of the extensive use of these cars. All right, uh, are we almost there? We're there, right? It's yeah. time. We're gonna do the light show? Yeah, let's go. All right, where are we going? I got, I got a spot. You got a spot. <laughs> <laughs> It's like we're, we're two little police trolls <laughs> under a bridge. <laughs> Who with the light show? Light show. Yeah, there was a sick intro. Yeah. All right. Let's, all right, let's check it out. All right, Nick, so starting with the light package, this, of course, being a slick top, uh, meaning it doesn't have the traditional or typical style light bar on the roof that you would see on most police vehicles. Instead, we went with a headliner uh, or visor type uh, thin light bar inside of the vehicle. And we talked about the layers of lighting in the past where we tried to get that layer effect because it looks like there's more lighting from further away, which is obviously beneficial. So you've got some two lights in the grills here. And then in the bottom, we've also converted the factory fog light into a blue light as well. Moving on to the side of the vehicle, Nick, talked about this one light right at the very front end of the car on the side. Very important for clearing intersections. Whenever you're trying to get traffic to stop, this is the first light that they'll actually see when your car is starting to creep through an intersection and you want those vehicles to stop for you along with, of course, the siren going off as well. Down here at the floor of the car on the side here, we've got three LED lights as well to help for additional visibility on the side of the car and to also help the trooper's visibility at night when he's uh, getting out of his car, he might be on a traffic stop, might not be a very well lit area. These lights actually help kind of uh, light up the area on the side of the car for officer safety. You wanna make sure you're not stepping on anything dangerous. Uh, another light here on the window of the car, again, more side visibility. And the last smaller circular one here at the very end of the side of the car completes the side lighting for this vehicle. To the rear of the vehicle now, uh, mounting these two lights as high as we could go on the rear window. Of course, again, remember, we don't have a light bar on the roof. There's another uh, directional board here on the lower uh, deck here. Uh, moving down here, the factory halo lighting. Again, we've incorporated it into the Federal Smart Box where it now has a same flashing pattern as the rest of the lights, so it's a good way to get uh, the factory lighting to be used also as emergency lighting. Vehicles are approaching us. We're on the side of the road on the highway. They're, they're approaching at a pretty high rate of speed. Our cars need to be as visible as possible from as far away as possible. Can we see how to work them now? Let's do it. All right. Let me show you how the light box works. It's got a toggle switch here of one, two, and three. Number one activates the rear lighting only. Number two activates or incorporates rather the entire front lighting of the vehicle as well. So now with two, you know that you have the front and the rear emergency lights activated. And three activates the wigwag lighting, which is where our high beam lighting system also activates into the emergency lighting and it also activates the emergency siren. Here's number three. LT, phenomenal. I love it, man. This car is a beat. Thank you so much for showing us this ride. Uh, how, how does one get to drive one of these cars, if I might ask? Well, you know, you gotta start at the very 
top, you know, beatrooper.com. Uh, beatrooper.com, that's right. Yeah. We started here, police car series started here. We're back here under this bridge, two police trolls just doing our thing, <laughs> showing off this ride. Uh, thank you so much for having yeah, us yeah, again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I went in, brothers don't shake hands. Yeah. Brothers got a hug. Absolutely. And uh, you want to take them away with the sign off? I'll see you when I see you. And if I don't see you, then I'll see you. Yeah, he's good. What's up, Nod Squad? I'm excited to announce that the police car series has officially teamed up with the True Blue Network. This is a bad guy. Yes. look back to the beginning of the police cars you know I used to get a lot of requests asking to check out police cars in different parts of the nation well what I lacked was resources now we have we're still gonna get a version for this channel with exclusive content just for you guys however if you want to see the entire thing I urge you to go over to watchtrueblue.com and subscribe now now for the other episodes such as police vlogs we got tons more of those and matter of fact this is actually gonna help me out with the workload so I can increase that and those are gonna stay right here on Nick off duty for the not squad all right so I'm super excited I'm gonna put out a longer video explaining everything I'm gonna travel over to the true blue network actual headquarters that's in Cleveland Ohio so you guys can get a tour of the studio and maybe meet some of the personalities that are going to be on there so you guys can check it out for yourselves and understand the mission behind this network and why i chose to team up with them and last but not least i have a promo code for you guys to put in to get 20 percent off it's nod year nod year to get 20 percent off of a year subscription and nod month to get 20 percent off of a month subscription so stay tuned for all those videos thank you so much for all the support you gave me over the years and looking forward to this next chapter for nick off duty and the nod squad